We're going to begin, though, with shocking allegations against a titan in the world of Michigan State athletics. A bombshell new lawsuit claims George Perlis knew about an assault by Larry Nassar back in 1992, but covered it up. That lawsuit claims Larry Nassar drugged and raped a student athlete and recorded it on videotape. Uh, then it goes on to claim that when that field hockey player reported it, then athletic director George Perlis stepped in and made it go away. Rod Maloney has been pouring over the filing here. Rod, these are shocking claims. Yeah, Devin, you know, Larry Nasser is safely ensconced in a Florida federal penitentiary, and you would have thought by now we'd have heard all the things that he might have done or is alleged to have done, and then you read this, 141 pages of cringeworthy detail that really is damning of not only the university, the athletic department, but also George Perlis. The 33-count civil lawsuit by a former MSU co-ed and field hockey scholarship athlete by the name of Erica Davis includes, among other things, civil rights violations, gross negligence and failure to warn or protect, civil racketeering, which is alleging a criminal enterprise around molesting children, failure to report child abuse and negligent retention of an employee, former Dr. Larry Nasser. The suit claims in the spring of 1992, Erica sought treatment and Nasser allegedly drugged her prior to an examination that the suit claims was videotaped. Quote, Plaintiff Erica got so tired and could not move her arms. A short time later, Plaintiff Erica witnessed defendant Nasser raping her, end quote. Davis claims in the suit that she went to her coach, who, in turn, confronted Nasser, got a hold of the videotaped assault, and brought it to then athletic director George Perlis, and claims George Perlis, former athletic director, intervened, and the charges were dropped against the coach, but she was forced to return the video, resign, and sign a non-disclosure agreement, end quote. The suit claims this proves that not only did defendant Michigan State University have knowledge that defendant Nasser sexually abused and sexually assaulted minors, but that it would also go to great lengths to conceal this conduct. It goes on to say Michigan State University could have stopped defendant Nasser's conduct back in 1992, but it did not. Now, among some of the more disturbing corners of this case, it says that this student, 17 years old, wound up pregnant, had an STD as a result of this, had a miscarriage, and then ended up with cervical cancer in years later, all claiming that it stems from this incident. This was filed in Grand Rapids. It's a bombshell that we'll definitely be following in the weeks and months to come. Back to you. And Rod, I know you've been checking with the university for a response on this. Yeah, I, I have. Uh, they have written uh, responses. We're deeply sorry for the abuses that Larry Nasser has committed and for the trauma experienced by all sexual assault survivors. Sexual abuse, assault, and relationship violence are not tolerated by our campus community. While the protocols and procedures mentioned in this lawsuit do not reflect how sexual assault claims are handled at MSU, we are taking the allegations very seriously and looking into the situation. I also put in a call to George Perlis at his home, yeah. and uh, we, re we got an answering machine, but uh, have received nothing back from him in terms of what is contained inside this document. All right, Rod.